Do you ever find yourself pondering, how do split borders almost keep up with backcountry skiers? I will explain the variations in physical attributes that have allowed these boots to evolve and become well suited to the split borders environment. Greg's Gear Gap, a safe place to talk shop. It has been a painfully slow process that has taken us from this to this. This change has closed the performance gap that split borders experience with their backcountry skier friends. I feel boots are the single most important tool in capitalizing on efficiency of motion. Many of the boots I have tried have needed significant modifications and those will be shown. Each boot will be rated in five different categories on a scale of poor, fair, good, and excellent. The categories will start with skinning. I feel we normally spend about 85% of our time going uphill, so this is an obvious priority. The second will be boot packing, or climbing up steep terrain when our skins will no longer do the trick, followed by crampon compatibility, both in attachment to the boot and in practical use on a mountain. The fourth item will be the boot's ability to hold an edge on an icy skin track. Split boards are wide planks with a pronounced spoon shape at the tip that makes holding an edge on your downhill ski a challenge. The boot's ability to direct the force from your knee to the uphill edge is directly proportional to the tightness of your upper cuff. For a visual comparison, here is what poor edge control looks like, and this is excellent edge control. The final attribute I will judge is the ride. Although only about 5% of our day is spent in this mode, it is arguably the reason that got us off the couch. So bear with me as I attempt to have a one-way conversation with a camera. Traditional soft snowboard boots were definitely the beginning in this evolutionary process. However, where they came up short is their use in uphill travel. The lack of a walk mode leads to a short, unnatural stride due to its fixed forward lean. Fitting crampons to them is also a challenge and those with flexible soles makes the issue even worse. Not sure how these are supposed to go together, but uh, even if they could, because of this, as the crampon wants to engage into steep ice or snow, if that sole flexes, it disengages the front points and the crampon wants to slide out. Soft boots are great, however, when standing in lift lines and waiting for your order of poutine to be slid across the counter. These historical relics conjure images of moon boots and daring 1970s space exploration. That's one small step for man. The ratings for these boots are as follows. Scarpa Mastrali. Looking at my past selection of splitboard boots, it's obvious I was determined to capitalize on an alpine touring setup that the backcountry skiers use. Boots with a walk mode, pin binding capability, and crampon compatibility seemed like the perfect solution. These early touring boots did go uphill reasonably well, even with their limited ankle articulation, but their downhill performance was a complete fail in the snowboarding world. The lack of a progressive forward lean made you bend at the waist, which made for a poor ride. My ratings for these boots are as follows. The Dinafit TLT5 and 6 were revolutionary when they first came out. They were super lightweight and had impressive unrestricted ankle articulation. 
These boots required a boot mod in the locking mechanism to allow for forward lean. This modification consisted of cutting a notch in the back that made future adjustments almost impossible. Because the upper cuff of the buckle was integrated into the locking mechanism for walk mode, you could not snug your upper cuff while skinning to improve edge control on an icy skin track. The TLT 5 and 6 have been discontinued but replaced with the Dinafit Speed Fit. I rate these boots as follows. Arc'teryx entered the Alpine Touring boot market with the Procline. I've had two pairs of these boots, and for ski mountaineering, I feel it's a pretty good option. This pair has been to the top of Rainier and an Ollie. It took a more time-consuming modification to make them useful on a splitboard, but basically the factory lock on the back had to be removed and replaced with pins that allowed for a more forward lean. The Procline AR is the same boot, but has a full-length plastic tongue. This improved the ride and was an overall benefit. Arc'teryx stopped manufacturing this boot, and Solomon has taken it over with the S-Lab X Alp. Here are my ratings for the Procline. The Atomic Backland Pro. This is where things really begin to change. Phantom came out with the link lever that replaced the factory locking mechanism and allowed for an adjustable forward cant with a surfy feeling in the forward lean. Game changer. I added an aftermarket ankle strap to aid in the heel to toe reaction time. This was another significant improvement over the previous versions I had used. The final mod was removing the factory BOA lacing system. My ratings for the Atomic Backland Pro are as follows. The Phantom Slipper. Through natural selection, the Phantom Slipper has adopted the physical characteristics that are best suited to the splitboarder's environment. This boot has all the great qualities of the Atomic Backland Pro, but it comes with the mods completed. After getting in about 25 days so far in this boot, I can say it has a better ride than the Atomic because it has a little bit more lateral flex and a better surfy feel. My ratings for the Phantom Slipper are as follows. I asked longtime backcountry ski partner Travis Nichols, who is a skier and an outdoor industry professional, to offer up some final thoughts on this topic from an outsider's perspective. I have been an outdoor recreation professional for a couple decades now, and I've had the opportunity to watch snowboarding evolve into the backcountry. One of the really amazing evolutions of this has been really users identifying purpose-built product. The original snowboard boot was a derivative of the Sorel uh, winter hiking boot and it's evolved and grown. As snowboards have gone further, higher, and deeper into the mountains, we've seen more and more need for technical equipment that meets users' demand. And I've seen the technology of ski boots evolve and brought over into the splitboard world, increasing efficiency and really the mountain travel aspect uh, greatly improved. If you are chasing peaks um, or in any way doing any time in the mountains for long distances, it's really difficult to ignore the benefits of a hard boot. Okay, good? Good. That is what we want to see. Right on. Good. Okay.